please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Saving for long and little by little to fund all of your dreams can sometimes seem a little overwhelming and stressful. Regardless of which stage of life you are in, you definitely will have some short-term and long-term financial goals and we are here to help you achieve them. Hello and a very warm welcome to NSC Finviz, powered by CNBC TV 18. I'm Gautam Srinivasan, your host, and we are here to help your money make more money. We're here at Nami Mumbai at the offices of one of the leading IT players in the world, Sintel. Founded in the year 1980, Sintel is a leading global provider of information technology and knowledge processing services. Sintel's digital services enable clients to engage customers, discover new insights and create more connected enterprises. NSC Finvis with this initiative is enabling the young employees of Sintel in Mumbai to plan their financial needs wisely and effectively. Financial literacy in my view is an essential life skill and I think they should start teaching it in schools because it's very important for people and young people in particular to start understanding what the different products are, what their benefits are, what their potential pitfalls are uh, so that they can you know, choose, make the right choices to meet the financial needs for their life. Now, setting financial goals, choosing the right investments are, are, are ignored by most at this, uh, this stage. If they start with their financial planning right from day one and if organizations act as enablers, it will go a long way in building the financial stability that will help them in meeting their professional as well as personal goals. Hello and welcome to NSC Finvis Season 5, powered by CNBC TV 18. The core topic of discussion today is mutual funds versus other investment options. And we are at the offices of Sintel today, whole host of professionals joining us to have their questions answered from our panel of experts. Let me quickly introduce you to them. We have Gaurav Mashruwala, who is an independent certified financial planner, and Mr. Pankaj Matpal, MD and CEO at Optima Money Manager. For the benefits of the, of, uh, the ladies and gentlemen out there who just started investing, Pankaj, explain to them why mutual funds versus the other investment options that they've been probably used to hearing as safe bets or something that they use, their parents are used to investing, like a real estate or gold. Why mutual funds? Mutual fund is an investment vehicle which provides you opportunity to invest in different asset classes. So you want to invest in equity, you have equity oriented mutual funds. You want to invest in debt like bonds, debentures, term deposit, that kind of asset. You have debt oriented mutual fund scheme. You have gold mutual fund scheme which invests ultimately in physical gold. So you have mutual fund which helps you in investing in different asset classes. So one is that you have proper asset location with the help of mutual fund. Second thing, it offers you diversification. So your risk is minimized. You have expertise of fund managers in mutual fund who help you investing in your money in a better professional way so hmm. that you earn more profit out of that. So there are advantage of investing through mutual fund in different asset classes compared to investing directly in some stocks or investing directly in fixed deposit. All right, and Gaurav, what's a good starting point? Because you have, say, an ultra short-term fund, you have hybrid fund, you have balance fund. What's a good starting point to invest in mutual funds? What's your view on this? First step is <coughs> define your financial goals. Make list of responsibilities and dreams. And instead of making it a very cumbersome activity, let me tell you an easier way to work out. When you go home today, just take a selfie. And next to that selfie, write down all your goals. You know, you can do it digitally because you are more savvier. And thereafter, any investment that you make or any financial decision that you take, look at that picture. And thereafter, the ride is very, very easy. Hmm. Because the moment you have something which you require in next one month, you probably will pick up a mutual fund scheme like what is called technically as ultra short bond fund. Now these terms become complicated because we don't know our goals. But the moment we know our goal is ultra short, 
will pick up a ultra short bond fund. The moment your goal is more than seven, eight, nine years away, pick up an equity fund. The moment your goal is interim based, pick up a balance fund. Hmm. So the straight away name will tell you for how much duration and which duration this product is suitable. The moment you decide your goals, thereafter pick and choose how you want to start. You know, focusing on the point that Gaurav uh, had mentioned that you need to specify your goals and then you need to tweak your investment options accordingly. The answers will, will come up right away. But when it comes to, say, judging the quality of a fund, you have various, you have specified your goal and you know this is the category of funds you want to invest in. But within that, there is a whole range of options. So how do you gauge the quality of a fund, Pankaj, if you could explain to the audience? See, these funds, when you invest in equity fund or debt fund or a hybrid fund, these are compared to its benchmark. So you have to see that how they are performing. And when you see the quality, one is that what kind of stocks are there in the portfolio of those mutual funds. If you are talking about equity fund, then definitely underlying asset is equity shares. So you have to see what kind of equity shares are there. It's difficult to understand that, but for this, there is a uh, different parameter, like there are returns, similar to that, there are parameters to compare the risk. So you have to see consistency in the performance, and when you want to compare funds, compare with the same category of fund. Okay, and in terms of, you know, some, some people have a risk profile of, you know, wanting to directly invest in equities versus, say, a mutual fund route. What would you say to them at this juncture? If you want to start putting in equity directly, then you have to have this, both skills and time. If you don't, then take an equity mutual fund route, that will be a little easier for you. All right, and another common question is, how many mutual fund schemes should I have in my portfolio? As you mentioned, you need to know your goals before, then select your right financial vehicles, but still this question keeps popping up saying, how many should I have? Is eight enough, is nine enough, or is four enough, or three enough? What do you say to anyone who approaches you with that question? based on your goals, so if it's a long-term goal or if you're putting in equity, uh, not more than two and three equity funds. If you're looking at a debt-based product, not more than one or two. A simplest benchmark is how many of them you're going to regularly follow. And when I'm saying regularly, not on daily basis, not on weekly basis, but once a quarter, once in three months. Now, more the schemes you have, less likely are you to be you know, spending time following it. I hope we have answered your question. On that note, uh, it's time to take a quick break. We've been discussing mutual funds versus other investment options in this first segment of NSE Finvis. When we return, we'll be talking more in detail about goal-based investing. Stay tuned to CNBC TV 18. Welcome back to NSC Finvis, powered by CNBC TV 18. In the previous segment, we were discussing mutual funds versus other investment options. In this segment, we will be taking a deep dive into goal-based investing. So uh, let's start with more details on what you were talking about earlier, uh, uh, Gaurav, in terms of goal-based investing. You were right in the sense of once you identify your goal, it becomes easier to, to identify the investment options that you have. Could you expand on that thought and give some markers to the folks sitting here on how they identify their goals because that itself is not an easy process for a lot of them so yeah. how do they go about identifying their life goals typically what has been observed is that uh, and I'm, I'm talking about more like an indian society across strata of income is that uh, a home is what we all need uh, then there's money needed for either own education and uh, yeah, our own marriage, or if you're married, children's education and their marriage. Or now we also find a lot of married couples who are saying they want to create a kitty and give it to the child, and the child will decide how much for marriage, education, or settling. So second is that. Third set of responsibilities could be towards parents, siblings, so family responsibilities, retirement, and if there are critical illnesses. Below each of those goals, write down which investment. If you are putting money in XYZ equity fund for a goal which is 10 years away, call that fund. So if it's for a marriage, so-and-so's marriage equity fund. 
link your investments to your goals and you'll be fine. All right. And Pankaj, moving on, tax saving is also sometimes, you know, put as a goal when it comes to approaching investment. What do you say to that? Because, you know, tax saving is not a goal, but a side effect when it comes to financial planning. Government of India has given you all the possibility to invest in different kind of products. If you want to buy a house, you have choice when you pay loan amount. On that also you get tax benefit on principal amount, again under section 80C only, that offers you deduction. If you want to, in, if you want to protect your future income, I mean you want to buy insurance, premium you pay, that also offers you deduction under same section. If you want to invest to achieve your long term goal, as I said, equity is a good choice of investment. You have ELSS, Equity Linked Saving Scheme, which is a kind of mutual fund only, diversified mutual fund, offers you tax benefit under Section 80C. You have NPS, which offers you tax benefit. If you want to invest in a debt instrument, you have choice to invest in NPS, PPF, or five-year fixed deposit. So first decide that for which goal you want to invest, how much time you have to achieve that goal, what is your risk appetite, and then decide which scheme. All right, to extend that point, there are two issues which come up with when it comes to goal creation, which one is guessing the cost of the goal and then underestimating the impact of inflation. How do you address these, these points to someone who's looking to set that goal and ascribe a cost to that goal and also factor in that impact of inflation? What would you say to them? See, though it is difficult to guess that how much inflation impact will be there and how much money will you need, but based on the historical uh, numbers, you can definitely understand that how much inflation is there in uh, education, how much inflation in general, so based on that, based on the uh, family history, etc., you can decide that for X number of years after retirement, how much money you should accumulate for. And second thing is reviewing that. So start early, save regularly, keep reviewing your financial plan and keep investing according to need. All right, let's shift focus to the audience now and hear about their goals and let's hear the experts giving them advice on how to achieve their goals. We have Seema Date. My goal is to uh, have for child education. I have a plan in mind, but I have not invested yet in mutual funds. So, And the goal is for 10 years. Uh, so it's a long-term goal. And uh, my thinking is around that time, it should be at least uh, 50 lakhs to 1 crore which I should have, so not sure if... Uh, so you want to generate a corpus of one crore in the next 10 years for your child's education, so... The simplest thing is that first you decide that had it been today, if you need the money today for a child education, how much money will you need for that? Second thing, when you decide about the goal, suppose you need one crore for that, and you start investing for that, considering it's a long-term goal, so equity, is the best asset class for achieving your long-term goal. 80 to 100% even, you can allocate in equity for this goal. And when you are near to the goal, say for first six, seven years, you are investing 80 to 100% in equity. But when you are near to the goal, systematically reduce your exposure in equity and increase in debt. All right, I hope we have answered your question. On that note, uh, we'll take another short break. When we return, the floor is open to everyone here at the Central Headquarters to ask questions about financial planning to our experts. Stay tuned to CNBC TV 18. Welcome back. You're watching NSC Finviz, powered by CNBC TV 18. In the previous segments, we were discussing mutual funds versus other investment options and the importance of goal-based investing. And in this segment, we'll open the floor to our audience to ask any question that they have on financial planning to our experts. So let's see who would like to ask the first question. I see a hand raised there. Uh, my question is regarding book value versus uh, speculated value. So what is the actual book value for Nifty and, and uh, how to address the speculation part of it? Okay, Bankaj, would you like to answer that? See, what is book value basically? If you liquidate that business, that company, that how much the actual value you will get out of this is your book value. And rest is premium on that. 
So any share which you buy, the actual price, the current market price is based on two things, is book value and what price to book value you are buying to this. So the premium to that actual value. Now this premium will keep changing. See book value will change with time. If the company has more profit, the price will go up. If there is loss, price will come down. But share price changes every moment. Now, see, when you buy a stock, that is one important point that at what PE or at what price to book ratio you are buying that stock. Higher the price to book ratio, higher the PE price earning ratio, it means there is a higher risk in that. Because the premium may come down any moment if any difference in the supply and demand. So that is the criteria of selecting a stock. Let's move on to the next question. The lady, I believe I had a question to ask. Uh, my question here is, yes, we rightly know that, you know, we need to diversify our investment. It is not right to put all eggs into the same basket. So apart from mutual funds, uh, what other sectors of investment would you suggest? Would real estate be a good investment at this point of time? Should you be investing in real estate? That's a call you need to take. If you need a house to stay in, pick it up. Then that should be the first priority. Uh, if you don't need house to stay in, but you are saying over and above my routine investment portfolio I want to put in real estate, uh, particularly at young age, I would, we would say is go slow purely because real estate is an illiquid piece. You can't sell it easily. It's indivisible. You can't kind of just go and sell off one bedroom if you need money. I mean, the entire thing has to go. It's immovable. If you get transferred, you can't take it with you. And that occupies a large amount, large quantum of your capital. So I've seen portfolios where the total investment is 5 crores, 4.5 crores is in single piece real estate. That's not very prudent. So even if real estate is giving you high returns, hypothetically, stay away from that at the initial part of your career. All right, that's it from all of us here. Thank you to our guests for sharing their insights on the topic of financial planning. It's been a riveting discussion, mutual fund versus other options, and of course, the importance of goal-based investing. And I'd like to thank the audience here at Sintel as well. Your questions have been very engaging, and it's, it's very heartening to see different levels, different expertise of investing coming out. A big thank you to all of you, and thank you to our viewers for tuning in. We'll be back with another episode, another company, and lots of interesting case studies on investing. Stay tuned to CNBC TV 18. I think it was a wonderful event, and uh, financial education is something that uh, people at our level always need. So I would like to thank Intel for organizing this, and of course CNBC TV 18 for taking the initiative, but it was a wonderful event. I think this is an amazing initiative by National Stock Exchange to increase awareness among employees in the IT sector. I think post this event, employees are more educated about investing in mutual funds. It was an excellent show. Uh, you know, it was really uh, you know educating, and we could learn a lot of things. You know, with regards to investments and regards to stock markets and you know mutual fund investments and especially on the gold investment. So it was an excellent show.